actually in real life. It's in my dreams. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what it's about. I call that hashtag stalker. <laughs> it is. It is. Exactly. It's about having a stalker. Yeah. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's early, but I'm I'm all right. No, nice, nice. Um, you're in the same room as we spoke last time. Where where I'm is all, this? I I never move from here. I'm just always permanently here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't walk I'm out that door behind you. Home. Yeah, no, since we spoke, I've been chained to the desk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Except on the door, there's some, looked like it's fashion hanging templates or something. Yeah, is that what yeah. that is? Got, like pattern cutting shapes. Yeah. That's a sleeve. The gold one's like a sleeve. The white one's like a bodice. So, yeah. Okay. I can't work that because I'm, I see I'm not a sewing person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've yeah. had a busy, um, monstrous few months, uh, rather, you know, with, with, with touring and then the Brit Awards and some new music. My gosh, your Brit performance. Woo. That oh, was so cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I was very nervous about the Brits and I really wanted it to be good. So it's nice to hear that. It, was it the first time you had been to the Brits? Because it was first time performance, wasn't it? It was my first everything. Oh, because, really? so you've like, never even been to the Brits at all? Never been to the Brits. I've never performed to an audience that size. The last show I did was 200 people before that. So it was like a real jump for me. So there was a lot oh. of anxiety there. Yeah. Okay, now I get why you were nervous, but the the uh, the, the setup and the, and the production, the creation of, of your performance was that was that a bit of you, or was that did it did a team design that for you? No, that was that was a lot of collaboration. That was like weeks of Zoom calls, kind of me sitting there. It was incredible how much detail I was in. Down yeah. to like I was sitting there on Zoom, like why am I here talking about what fabric the backdrop should be? Like that's. <laughs> There's detail, but that's a lot of detail. So, yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely involved in every step of it, yeah. I'm sure the fabric conversation, though, would have been fine with you being in fashion. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. still, I was like, oh, I don't know. They're like, should it be a cream? Should it be an orange? I'm like, I don't know, guys. Surely this is where you take over. <laughs> <laughs> guys, just sort it out. I've got enough to do with singing a song out. in front of millions. Can you just exactly. sort it out? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was fun. It was really fun to yeah. kind of make the performance from start to finish, so, yeah. And how, I mean, in your, your eyes, how has the world taken Black Hole? Because we, when we spoke, it was about Black Hole and, and in your words, the, the weird video clip, which we were talking about. And, and I still love that clip. I think about it all the time. Um, but in your words, how, how, how do you feel the world has taken you as an, as an upcoming artist? Whoa, that's a big question. Um, it's hard to tell. I feel like really well. I don't know. Like I was just in Germany and traveling around Europe doing promo and even being able to talk to you in Australia. I feel like they're all good signs, you know? Yeah. So, um, I feel like Black Hole went down well. It's, I mean, it's my best, my most successful song so far. Yeah. Um, but now I think it's just about actually getting to all these places to see if it's actually real, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Is it is it quite is it quite hard to to take it that you're talking to people around the world and you're going to Germany and and hopefully soon you'll come to Australia and all those kinds of things? Is it hard to kind of comprehend that one minute you know there, there's you in the background and the next minute we we're seeing Griff worldwide and yeah. we're seeing Griff at the Brits and we're how how do you like comprehend it and kind of emotionally deal with all that? You kind of just don't think about it. I think that's the best thing you can do. Just stay in the room think, you're in. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just stay in this bubble. Because so I think the minute you start thinking about it, you just get in your head and you overthink and it's quite dangerous. So I think you just got to be grateful for it, but just do it and don't think about it too much. That's mm. what I do anyway. So, yeah. It's probably the best way to do it, really. Just yeah, so. just to see what happens the next day and then the next day. Otherwise, just... the pressure just gets to you. You're like, oh, my God, it's Australia. I'm talking to Mikey from Australia. And you get in your head. You're like, did that go well or not? And you just have to let it go, you know? Yeah, don't worry. They go well. It's fine. Okay, you're you're fine. Don't stress. Talk about uh, one night. I love this new vibe. It's you. I, I actually, there's always that one song with an artist that 
you think, oh, can it beat the old one? Can it beat? It's quite hard. I'm finding Black Hole and One Night, same level. There's not oh, one, okay, there's not one well, better than the other. I loved Black Hole, but good. I'm loving One Night just the same. Oh, like, and I, and I generally mean that. Um, how do you as a singer, songwriter, performer kind of keep it the same for people mm. loving your music because you know there's always those ups and downs one may work better than the other and i mean that's just that's the way it is mm. um but i feel it it matches black hole with one night how, how do you feel it is yeah i mean i'm glad it feels like the same but i don't think i can control whether people find it the same or not yeah so it's more just a relief when i hear that um I well just, I, I, I like it Good. I just have to worry about the writing, really. Yeah. Um, and if I love it, hopefully that means that there's a greater chance that other people will. But um, yeah, it's always nerve wracking. And don't speak too soon. Maybe my next music will be terrible. You know. Nope. <laughs> but so far, so far we're on a good track record. Well, look, I, I think I think you're going to be fine. Um, what What is it about one night? Are we talking about one night going out? Are we? We're what, what? talking about. We're actually talking about one night in, which is kind of the worst thing. I think it's that feeling of like never quite feeling alone because you're constantly carrying like really heavy burdens. And I think for me, like all of my worries are 10 times louder at night time. And all the things that you didn't realize you were worried about, whether it's like work or your future or your past or your family, I think for some reason you can find yourself really overthinking all of that stuff at night time. So it's kind of just about wanting one night away from that, you know? Right. So why um, why is it night time for you that you kind of have start having those thoughts and not say when you wake up going oh okay yeah yeah let's do it or you know if you're having a, a good or a bad time why is it night I think, I think it's the only time where it's actually silent if you're actually honest with yourself like you're constantly doing things you can distract yourself in the daytime but like when yeah. you're kind of lying there and there's nothing on or nothing else happening to distract you because we're always on and we're always looking at things and going mm. and going. So I think it's just that one moment of pause where I think a lot of things can feel like they're crashing down on you sometimes. Yeah. Is is the nighttime thing for you though, like do do you see it as, as a good thing where you can kind of think about what's going on in your in your life though, or is it more up and down? Like because you, there is a lot going on for you at the moment. Yeah. I mean, you, you're playing shows and and, and everything and, and new music. So are you yeah. kind in in a, in a positive way? You're kind of grateful that you're having that nighttime. Psh- to think yeah, about definitely. everything? I think it has ups, ups and downs. I think the nights mm. where you're overthinking everything is like annoying. And that's kind of what the song's about. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's, it's, you know, I think it's important that we pause these days. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pause, chill out, watch an episode of Home and Away, and everyone's happy. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> hey, I do want to ask you about an, another song uh, on, on your mixtape Remembering My Dreams. This is intriguing oh. for me. Okay, Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Are, are, are these your dreams and you say your childhood and growing up with your family and you're remembering those and bringing them into your life now? Um, remembering my dreams. It, it's kind of a bit of a sister track to One Night, so I'm honest with you, theme-wise. Right. And it's kind of about like, it's actually about always seeing someone in your dreams, which is annoying. And it's kind of like, I guess that could be an ex or whatever, and it's like. Oh, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, like, <laughs> and, and I love the line. It's like, of course, you found a way to throw me back of balance. It's like someone that you've been trying to forget for so long. Yeah. And suddenly, when it comes to your dreams, they're there, and you're like, of course, you found a way to find me, even if it's not like actually in real life, it's in my dreams. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what it's about. I call that hashtag stalker. <laughs> it is, it is, exactly. It's about a stalker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, I mean, UK is open at the moment for some shows, some festivals, and, oh, this is so good. I'm seeing a lot of artists that are doing that, and, and you're one of those at the moment. How was all that travelling for you, being on or being able to be on stage? Oh, it's been nuts. Like, do you know what? I think all this year, artists kept saying, like, I miss live music, and I don't yeah. think... I think I was saying it, but I didn't really know what I was saying <laughs> because I'd never really done it. And then suddenly this summer doing festivals i was like crap no i get it now yeah like doing festivals seeing that many people like sing black holes to me um was like really surreal and really incredible yeah oh so good now your dates that you're currently doing live shows i mean what are we 
kind of a quarter of the way through, but I'm not seeing any Australian dates on this list. What's I what's know, the go here? I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I think restrictions aren't letting us come there yet. So I think yeah, as nah. soon as we do, we're planning to make it happen, I promise. Yeah, well, maybe we just organise some for 2022 and yeah. just, just come. I, I will. 2022, I can't believe that's so soon. I know, that's it's madness, so isn't it? Like, yeah, we're only I'm about 79 happy. days till Christmas. Wow. Stop it. Don't say that. Oh, my Christmas tree's already up. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Great. Oh, crazy. We are loving one night, Griff. It's so good to catch up with you again. Um, and you. good to see the room still looking the same and enjoying the fashion. Good. Yeah, it's still looking the same. It's still really messy. It's great. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter, though. Griff, thanks so much for hanging out with us again. Thank you, of course. Thank you for having me.